Hello all. In this lecture we will see about multi-level indexes and uh, then B tree and B plus tree. So this is the outline of this lecture. Multi-level indexes, we will define what is a search tree, then B tree and B plus tree. So multi-level indexes. So this multi-level indexes is designed to greatly reduce the remaining search space as search is conducted. That is, we have already seen primary indexing. So in primary indexing, we will be keeping an index file. We will keep an index file. And in that, that index file is ordered. Now if I want to search an element, what I will do? I will perform binary search on the index file. And I will get the, uh, the element and I will search for the data file data file so this is what is happening in primary indexing now if the number of uh, records that are stored uh, is huge then the index file size will also increase for imagine that there are around uh, 1 lakh uh, 100,000 there are 100 or uh, 1 million users are there so 1 million users are there and so there will be 1 million index entries will be 1 million index entries in the uh, index file. Now if I want to search for a particular field, I have to perform uh, binary search on this 1 million entries. Okay, 1 million entries I have to perform binary search. And you know the order of uh, running time of this binary search is log b to the base 2. So it will take that much time to search that index file. So if we could reduce that search, if we could reduce that search, then it will be much more easier to get the access or which will be much more faster to get a record. So this multi-level indexing is designed to greatly reduce remaining search space as search is conducted. So how we can reduce that search space? So we provide multi-level indexing. Instead of single level indexing, we provide different levels of indexing. Okay, so here index file, it is considered a first or base level of a multi-level indexing. So in the, as in the previous case, the index file, we have an index file. It will be considered as the first or base level of multi-level indexing. Now what we do is, we will provide another index file to this index file. So that is what is having. We will have a, a second level. We will have a second level of indexing which will index. So this will index to the primary index. So this is the primary index to the first level. So we have an index file as in the previous case in primary level indexing we have an index file. So in that index file we will store the uh, record pointers. We will store the record pointers. Now what we do is so when this becomes 1 million, 1 million entries it will be a very difficult task to search it binary search has to be performed on to 1 million. So instead of performing binary search on 1 million, what we do is we provide a second level and this will be the primary index to the first level. So we provide an index to this first level. Okay, then we can provide third level also. If we want, we can provide a third level and this will provide an index to the uh, second level so this will provide this to this index this index uh, this will index the second level and this will index this uh, and this index file will contain the actual data pointer so searching will be search space will be reduced the search space will be reduced if we provide different levels okay so we'll see an example so this is an example for two level indexing so this is the actual index file so this this is the first or base level so this is the actual index file and this is the data files these are the data files which are stored in our hard disk or disk box okay so this is the data file and now we provide indexing for this uh, data these data files and this forms a first level indexing so this is actually if we uh, avoid this thing so this is actually the primary indexing primary indexing scheme now if we have only this primary indexing scheme then we have to search the whole set of index file so instead of doing that we provide another level so this is second level so second level of indexing is there now if i want to search a value from 2 to 35 
I know that I have to search only this record. I have to perform binary search only on this. I need not consider all these uh, index files. So that is the use of this multi-level indexing. So this is second level indexing. So if I want, I can provide a third level of indexing here. So this will index to the second level. So binary search can be reduced if you provide such kind of multi-level indexing. Okay. So this is the example for uh, IBM index sequential file. So this is an example for IBM in IBM systems. They they use ISAM, ISAM organization. It it is index sequential file organization. So if we provide such level of uh, different levels of indexing, we can reduce the search space. So if I want to get a value. Uh, 57 so I need to search this index file I have to perform binary search here I'll get I can find that it is between 55 and 85 so it is definitely in this record so I'll go to this uh, point I'll perform binary search here and I can get the actual data file so it is very easy rather than performing binary search in the whole index file I can perform binary search at different levels so by the, so we can reduce the execution time, search time. Okay. Next is uh, dynamic multi-level indexes using B tree and B plus tree. Okay, B tree and B plus tree are special uh, trees are a special type of data structures. Okay, special type of data structures. So it is actually tree data structure. So you have already learned tree data structure in. Uh, in your data structure uh, theory class so the b tree and b plus trees are actually tree structures so we will see some tree data structure terminology these things you already know but i am just uh, refreshing all those things so tree is formed uh, of by a set of nodes so we, tree is formed of a set of nodes then uh, each node except root node has one parent and zero or more child nodes that you know then leaf node has no child nodes at all. So you know what is a leaf node, what is root node, what are child nodes. Then unbalanced if leaf nodes occur at different levels. So if the leaf nodes are at different levels, we call it as unbalanced. If they are at the same level, we call it as balanced. Then non-leaf node also called as internal node. So we call the non-leaf node as internal nodes. Then subtree of node consists of node and all descendant nodes. So this is an example for this uh, search tree or uh, binary. Uh, we, we can call this as a search tree. Okay. So this is the root node and this is a subtree. So subtree consists of node and its descendants. Then uh, these are the different levels. This is at node level 1, node level 2, node level 3. Then these K, E, F, J, R, at are all uh, leaf nodes. Okay, so D is internal node. I is also internal node. G, H, C are all leaf nodes. B is considered as internal node. Okay, so nodes E, J, C, G, H, K are leaf nodes of the tree. So this is a tree. You have already studied this tree. Then this is not balanced because leaf nodes are at different levels. So this C is at level 1, then uh, G and H are at uh, level 2, K, J are at level 3. So they are leaf nodes are at different levels. So this is not balanced. This is an unbalanced tree. Okay, unbalanced tree. Next we will see what you mean by a search tree. So search tree, it is a special type of tree which is used to guide search for a record. So it is a special kind of tree. It is a special kind of tree used to guide search for a record. So if you want to search a record, we can use this search tree. So search tree, so you have to learn only the definitions. As per your syllabus, you have to learn the definition for search tree, B tree and B plus tree. So you know should know only the structure, how that search by B tree will look like, how this B plus tree will be look will look like you need not study at the algorithms as per syllabus it is clearly mentioned that you need not study algorithms to perform searching insertion deletion all these things so you need to know only the structure of search tree b tree and b plus tree so you have to learn this so search tree of order p 
is a tree such that each node contains at most p minus 1 search values. So if it is if we say that it is of order 4 means it will contain at most 3 search values. Okay. And there will be p pointers. So if it is order p then it will contain p pointers and the pointers will be in the order p1, k1, k2, k2 p2, k2 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 like that it will go on up to pq kq minus 1 to pq sorry uh, pq last element will be pq where q less than or equal to p so q may be less than or equal to p so uh, each node so here what you can infer is that there will be the each node will contain at most p minus 1 search values so search values will be p minus 1 that is k1 k2 are all the search values kq minus 1 are all search values uh, and at most p minus 1 search values and there will be p pointers so p1 p2 uh, pq are all pointers okay and they are in this order p1 k1 p2 k2 like this it will be ordered so here pi is a pointer to a child node so here p1 p2 uh, etc are child node or it can be a null pointer if there is no child node then it will be a null pointer and k1 k2 and each ki is a search value from some ordered set of values so here k1 k2 are actually search values search values means what we have to search if you have to search here ssn then ki will be ssn value if you are going to search name then ki will be name values there are some constraints on the search tree so this is a general representation so order p means there will be p minus search values and it, uh, and p pointers and it will be the pointers will be in the order like this okay now constraints on the search tree within each node if we take a node inside that node k1 will be less than k2 and less than uh, like that it will go on so if we take this node so this is a node so this is a node in search tree you take this node so we have p1 k1 like that p2 k2 like that p k p k i minus 1 p i k i like that it will go on so if we take in the node this k1 will be less than k2 less than k3 like that so the highest value will be k q minus 1 so that is what is written here so with this in each node k1 less than k2 less than like that okay then for all values x in the subtree pointed at by pi so we have subtrees so p1 pi pq are all pointing to subtrees subtrees means there will be different in nodes and uh, children there will be different children and grandchildren and all so if we take the values inside this inside this there will be some k values here also we will be having here also subtrees will be having k values here also we will be having some k values here also we will have some k values so how those k values will be so this is a constraint so for all values x in the subtree pointed at by pi we have k i minus 1 less than x less than k i for 1 less than i equal to i less than or q and x less than k i for i equal to 1 and k i minus 1 less than x for i equal to q so what is the meaning of these three means the first one is k i minus 1 so x will be between these two values so if it is a it is a node in between so if it is a node in between so if it is a node sorry if it is a value if this pointer is a, a value between this node in it is internal to this this is pi so if this if we take pi and if it has a child node then all the x values or all the key values inside this subtree will be between ki minus 1 and ki so that is what is written here this all the k values or x values we are generally calling it as x values so all the search values will be between this ki minus 1 and ki so that is what is written here now if it is the first node then it will be pointing to some node so it should be the all the subtrees k values or the x value 
should be less than k1 that is what is written here x less than k1 now the last node will be pointing to subtree then this x will be greater than this value that is what is written here so kq minus 1 less than x so this is what we have written so these are the two constraints so within each node it should be like this and for subtrees subtrees these three conditions should be there okay if it is a middle in between node in between value then it should be like this if it is a first node it should be like this if it is a last node it should be like this last element it should be like this so this is the general structure of a search tree okay this is the general structure of a search tree okay now uh, we can perform insertion deletion uh, searching everything can be performed on the search tree okay we need not study those algorithms here uh, the problem is search tree does not get i will show an example so this is an example for a search tree so this is an example for a search tree so we can see that here uh, this is this is a pointer these are all tree po node pointers so this denotes tree node pointers and this will denote null pointer and the values will denote key values so it may be an ssn number admission number like that so all these are key values six nine seven eight are all key values so this dotted uh, will show the will point to a tree point so this is actually p1 so p1 so all the values if you check the value key values search values it is three here it is one here it will be less than five okay it will be less than five it, since it is left now right side so right side we are pointing this there is a tree pointer here it is pointing to some other subtree so all the values in this should be greater than this five so if you check it is six nine seven eight twelve all are greater than five now if we take here also six so it is an in-between value see between six and nine so all the subtree values should be between six and nine so if we check we can see it is bit seven and eight and here nine and here it is pointing to some other subtree so the value should be greater than nine so it is here 12 so this is a search tree okay this is a search tree and this is uh, the search tree is balanced because all the leaf nodes are at the same level so they are at the same level so this is a search tree we have already seen a search tree which is not balanced so this is a search tree which is not balanced because they are not at the different levels okay so this is search tree so here uh, the main goal so there are two goals for a search tree so we have to uh, minimize the number of levels so this number of levels so we have first level second level so in this search tree we have two levels so the main goal is to reduce the number of levels okay the so first goal is to reduce the number of levels if the level increase number of levels increases means we have to search that much uh, searching should be done to get a record so it, it will consume our time okay then the second goal is uh, restructuring when we delete or insert when we perform some operation when we insert or when we try to delete reorganization will be needed in the tree okay reorganization will be needed such a kind of reorganization should be minimum so we should be able to minimize that restructuring of records okay we should minimize the restructuring of records when we try to insert or delete okay so actually search tree won't be addressing those two things next we are going to study b tree so b tree will be addressing those two goals so the first goal is to make sure that the index tree do not sorry the first goal is to minimize number of levels number of levels should be minimized and the second goal is to minimize the uh, restructuring or reorganization of the tree when we perform insertion deletion etc okay so we will see b tree so b tree is a kind of search tree it is a kind of tree it has some additional constraints so it provides multi-level access structure so this provides multi-level access structure and here the conditions here tree is always balanced in the case of search tree uh, there is no 
condition that it should be balanced. So here B tree is always balanced. That means all the leaf nodes will be at the same level. Then space wasted by deletion never becomes excessive. So space, if some deletion occurs, space will never become excessive. Okay. Then each node is at least half full. So this will ensure, this B tree will ensure that each node, so each node, there will be different nodes we have already seen. Inside that node, it, it will be at least half full. Okay, we cannot uh, we cannot have vacant spaces inside node. So if uh, it is of order uh, 10, for example, if the tree is of order 10, that means at least 9 search values will be there. So it should be half full. At least half full means there should be at least 5 elements in each node. Okay, each node is at least half full. Then each node in a B tree of order p can have at most p minus 1 search value. So this we have already seen in search tree also. So if it is order p, if it is order 10 means at least 9 search values will be there in each node. Okay. Now we will see the structure of a b tree. Now if you see uh, this can also be considered as a tree. Uh, we have already seen multi-level indexing. So this itself is a B tree. So if we see this is the root node, you have to draw like this. This is root node. The, we have one, two, three, four children are there. So it is pointing to this. Uh, all the values uh, greater uh, less than is pointing here like that. So it is also a special kind of tree itself. Okay. Now we will come to the structure of B tree. So we have seen what is a B tree. So it is always balanced. So we have to learn only the structure of this B tree. You have to learn this. Okay. So each internal node. So how the structure is. So structure means how the nodes will be. So each internal node in the B tree is of the form P1, comma, and there is a pair K1, PR1. Then P2, there is another pointer. Then there is a pair K2, PR2 like this kq last one is kq minus kq minus 1 prq minus 1 and there will be a pointer pq and here q less than or equal to p p means the order order of the tree and within each node we have we already have, we have already seen this condition within each node so in within inside each node these values k1 should be less than k2 less than k3 like that it should so the highest value of search will will be this one then for all search key uh, field values x in the subtree this also we have already seen this x value should be between these two and if it is the first node it should be x less than ki and if it is the last value then ki minus 1 less than x that is x should be less greater then this also we have already seen each node has at most three pointers at most p three pointers that is p1 here p1 p2 this pq are the three pointers okay there are two pointers here one is p1 then this is pr1 so these two types of pointers are there p1 then the other pointer is pr we call it as pr1 pr2 like that so there are two pointers here okay so so uh, p1 p2 pq are all three pointers that is it is pointing to some other subtrees okay and pr1 pr2 are all data pointers they are pointing to the actual record address that is if k2 k2 means it's a key if it is admission number so admission number 635 635 means we have to point to the particular data file. So K2 635 means it will be point, it has to point to the actual record. So PR2 will be the actual data file. Okay. So you have to understand there are two pointers. One is P1 type, P1 type of pointers. Then the other one is PR type of pointers. P type of pointers will be pointing to subtrees. PR type of pointers will be pointing to the actual record or the actual data file. So here each node has at most P three pointers. Then each node except the root and leaf nodes has at least 
flow uh, ceiling of p by 2 three pointers F ceiling of p by 2 pointers we have already mentioned this it should be at least half full half full means if order p is the uh, order of uh, p, uh, or p is uh, order of order 10 then at least five elements should be there in each node except for root and leaf nodes then a node with q three pointers where q less than or equal to p then at least q minus one search key fields will be there that is what we have written here also here here also we have written uh, sorry in the previous search tree we have written this same condition so if a node has q three pointers then where q less than or equal to p has q minus one search key values so if there are 10 three pointers then at least 10 minus 1 search field values should can be there. Then all leaf nodes are at the same level. So we have already told that B tree is a balanced tree. So every all leaf nodes should be at the same level. So this these seven conditions are for uh, B tree. So you have to understand it. You have to learn this because uh, your question will be asked, uh, explain the structure of B tree. Then you have to write all these things and I will show an example also. So this is the structure of B3. It is easier. So uh, if uh, the difference between uh, B3 and search tree is here we have a data pointer like this, PR1 like this. So it is a it is different from that search tree. So here what we have is P1, P2, etc. will be pointing to subtrees. And we have another pair K1, comma PR1. So PR1 is actually a data pointer. Okay. Then all the previous conditions like this, if you take a uh, subtree, all the values of x should be between this ki y minus ki minus 1 and ki. And if it is the first one, this x value should be less than k1. If it is the last one, then x value should be greater than this kq minus 1. Okay. So this is a structure of uh, B tree. Okay. So this is an example. So here this denotes three pointer and this denotes data pointer. So if you take this one, this is balanced also. This is balanced because all the leaf nodes at the same level. Okay. Now if you take, uh, this is of order three. This is of order three because we have only two search values. So maximum if it is of order three, it can have at most Q, uh, P minus one search values. Here we have two search values. Now five and all the values less than 5 all the values less than 5 will be in this subtree all the values between 5 and 8 will be in this subtree greater than 8 will be in this subtree okay so this is all so and if i want to search the record for 5 you can go to this pointer this hollow pointer if i want to search 8 i can simply search this pointer if i want to search 12 i have to search this pointer we will get the actual data. So this is data pointers. These are all data pointers. Okay. Next, you have to learn the structure of B plus 3. Okay, B plus 3. <clears throat> so here B plus 3, here data pointers are stored only at the leaf nodes. Here, if you take, there are data pointers at every internal node. Here also we have data pointer. If internal nodes are there everywhere, it will, there will be data pointers. But in B plus 3, data pointers won't be there at the uh, root or internal nodes. It will be only at the leaf nodes. Okay. So that's the difference. So data pointers stored only at the leaf nodes. So leaf nodes have an entry for every value of the search field and a data pointer to the record if search field is a key field. So if the search field is a key field, so if you are searching using a key for example, if you are using a social security number or admission number, they are all unique, they are all key fields. So if we are using such a kind of thing, then the leaf node will have an entry for every value of the search field. So if there are 60 students in the class, there will be 60 values in the leaf nodes, 60 values in the leaf nodes. If it is a key value, if we are going to search. For a non-key search, so if I am trying going to search using name, then the pointer points to a block containing pointers to data file records because 
there will be if if it is non key means there will be same name so if there is adira there may be two or three adiras in the class then we cannot store uh, leaf uh, in leaf nodes we cannot store all the adiras so what we do is for one adira we will point it to the particular block then where in that block all the adira records will be there so that is what here so for a non key search field the pointer points to a block containing pointers to the data file records so it contains a block containing all the data file records so if you are using some department search value so department in that department there may be 500 students so what we have in this uh, leaf node will be it will be pointing to those 500 addresses okay it will be pointing to a block which contain 500 addresses so leaf nodes of the b plus tree are usually linked so b plus tree uh, leaf nodes will be linked means here if you see the leaf nodes are not linked so in b plus tree these two nodes will be linked usually it may not be always so we what we do is we will connect this using like link this we will be connecting to this one and we will be connecting this uh, this node to this node so there will be some uh, pointer to point to this one like link list so that is why it is written here leaf nodes are of the b plus tree are usually linked then how the structure of the internal nodes will be so this is what we have talked about leaf nodes now there will be internal nodes so internal nodes will not contain any search value so some search field values from the leaf nodes are also repeated in the leaf nodes to guide search so in order to search make uh, searching easier in the uh, internal nodes also we may repeat the search field value so you will see the structure then you will understand so internal node of a b plus tree so how the in structure of internal node of a b plus tree so we have to distinguish here there will be in b plus tree we have internal node and leaf nodes the structure of internal node and leaf nodes are different that is why we write it separately so internal node of a b plus tree so it is uh, similar to the search tree and b, b tree what we have learned so each internal node is of the form p1 k1 so there won't be any pointer to the data file so because internal nodes will not contain data pointers that is why we have this pair only p1 k1 p2 it is not pair p1 k1 p2 k2 like this it will go on we have already seen q less than or equal to p and pi is a tree pointer so p1 p2 etc are pointing to subtree and k1 k2 are actually key values now k1 k2 are used to guide search so that we can go to which sub node we should know which uh, which subtree we should go so for that we use this k1 k2 values that is what we have written here so leaf node uh, internal nodes some search field values from the leaf nodes are repeated here to guide the search then within each internal node k1 should be less than k2 that we have already seen so k1 should be less than k2 so in in this internal node it should be in this order for all search fields uh, of x in the subtree this also we have already seen this thing so subtree's value should be like this so if we take an uh, in between value then it should be between those two values like that here the uh, difference is uh, there is no difference it's same as that of so for all search field values x in the subtree pointed at py we have this thing okay and if it is a leftmost node then it should be like this x less than or equal to ki and if it is rightmost then it should be like this then each internal node has at most p tree pointers this also we have already seen there will be p tree pointers subtree pointers will be there then this also we have seen so each internal node except the root has at least p by 2 ceiling of p by 2 tree pointers ceiling means if it is 4.5 it should be taken as 5 rather than 4 okay an internal node with q pointers where q less than or equal to p then q minus 1 search field values will be there this also we have already seen okay so this is a structure of internal node so this internal node will be p1 k1 like this it will go on here p1 is tree pointers p1 
then k1 are all search values and subtree values should be like this x less than or equal to k1 so this is the difference here less than or equal to is there in the case of p3 it will be less than okay here also it is like this so uh, x should be between ki minus 1 and ki okay x should be between these two values and here it can be x can be ki value also here also uh, kq minus 1 x should be greater than kq minus 1 so this is a structure of internal node so there are no data values here data pointers are not there so data pointers will be present only in the leaf node so this is the root node and internal nodes will be of this structure next we will see how a leaf node will look like so each leaf node is of the form like this k1 pr1 k2 pr2 kq minus 1 prq minus 1 and there will be a p next also p next why we should use this p next we have already mentioned that this leaf node should be linked to the next leaf node so for that we require a pointer so this is p next pointer okay so here pri is a data pointer pri will be pointing to some data pointer and p next points to the next leaf node of the b plus tree then within each leaf node it should be like this we know that k1 should be less than k2 like this it should be then for each pri uh, each pri data pointer so pri is a data pointer that points to the record whose search field value is ki or to a file con block containing the record so it will be pri is a data pointer which will point to that particular record or it will be a block containing the record then each leaf node has at least p by 2 values ceiling of p by 2 values then all leaf nodes are at the same level so all these conditions are there in the b plus tree also b tree also so this is a structure of leaf node leaf node will be like this okay leaf node it will be p1 r1 p2 r2 like this it will go on and there will be a p next also p next is there so that's the difference so this will point to the next leaf node so there will be another leaf node here so it will be pointing to that leaf node and these are all data pointers which will be pointing to the actual records so if i'm going to search 255 admission number it might be ki this will be 255 so i'll search for this data and i'll get the data file okay so this is leaf node so this is connected because if uh, to make it much more easier to search okay so there is an exercise so this is very important uh, you have to solve this exercise so you have learned different indexing structure and all so uh, only one formula i have taught i have taught it is about blocking factor bfr value so using that bfr value you can uh, do this exercise because uh, university you, for the university exam uh, one exercise will come from this part indexing uh, and about uh, we have already seen this um, multi-level indexing and all uh, single level primary level so in this case you have to learn this uh, you have to see this problem so i'll share the slide also so you can uh, read this question so block size block pointer everything is given record pointer length file how many bytes are there what are the values in the file then we have to calculate record size so there is only a one formula you can apply that then you have to calculate the blocking factors number of file blocks that will be required if it is unspanned then if it is ordered and if it is on primary indexing we have to calculate the blocking factor fan out everything is explained in the text if you have some doubt you can go you are, there are some sample questions inside the text so by simply it is simple question even the question is very huge the answer is simple okay within one or two lines you can answer this question then this is a continuation so this is a whole thing the same formula will be applied if it is for secondary index what it will be like that we are calculating what is the indexing block factor all these values will be calculated so fan out means how many uh, fan outs how many uh, values are connected or how many that fan out fan in means uh, from the tree how many outputs are there so that is known as fan out so you have to calculate all these things 
then uh, there is one more continuation here this is uh, using clustering index so this is based on primary indexing then the based on uh, secondary indexing these two questions are based on secondary indexing and this one is based on clustering indexing so you have already learned this indexing so if you go through this and inside the text also you have some examples solved examples are there so you will understand how to solve this so try to solve this definitely a question will be asked from this side so if you understood it correctly then you can easily solve it just two or three lines will be the uh, your answer will be just two or three lines and it is a simple formula you can simply calculate and easily get the answer okay so that's all this is a reference thank you